Well then, thanks for taking the time to come and speak to us. So as you might be aware, there's the Premier League Heads Up campaign. It's been running for the last couple of weeks. What's your view on mental health and how's it changed even in your short time in the game, you know, the awareness of it? I think what the Premier League are doing is massive to create awareness for the people that haven't come out or openly spoken about it yet because um, I think that's the sort of main target. I think when they come out and openly speak about it, they might feel better about themselves. Um, what sort of tools have you learned and are there any certain mantras, any rules you go with? So some of mine was control what you can control, yeah. you know, plan but don't project. So sometimes my mind would run away with it and oh, if I don't get fit, this is happening and I come out of the team and then I won't get a contract. And before I knew it, all these problems were created in my head. Well, I can't fix them because they haven't happened yet. Did you ever have any moments where you felt you were, you know, your mind was running away with things? Uh, yeah, definitely throughout my injury. Um, just knowing w when I was going to get back. I was, want I was wanting a date for when I was going to get back, but then when I got that date and I didn't get to it, I was thinking I was beating myself up because I didn't get to that date and I felt like I let the team down, I felt like I let everyone else down, which I felt like wasn't a good thing to put pressure on myself. Um, and after that, after that date had gone, I thought, you know what, I'm just going to take my time, I'm going to do things properly, I'm going to do the work that the physios have given me, and I'm going to get back when I'm going to get back. And you say you felt anger at times. So sometimes for me, I took it out on maybe my closest people, you know, my parents, you know. Yeah. Did, you, did you ever find that at home? And, and, but at the same time, they were, when I did speak to them, they helped me so much. Yeah, massively. Um, I feel like my dad was my biggest go-to point. I used to go home uh, after training when I had my pain. I used to sometimes get upset, I sometimes lose my anger and lose my head. But he was always the one to be like, look, it is what it is, we're going to get it fixed. Stay calm and you're going to get through this, I believe in you. And I feel like he was the main um, sort of person, sort of role model that got me through it. And obviously you love playing football, it's the best job in the world. So did anyone ever, what I was told again was, Feeling low about not being able to do your job at times is a normal reaction to an abnormal situation. If anybody, if a DJ couldn't play music, you know, for that. So is that something again that you realise that to feel how you were feeling was normal? Yeah, it's normal. Um, I used to go into training every day. I would be in the physio room. I'd see the players lacing up their boots to go outside. And it's generally the worst feeling as a footballer in the world to see other players playing football, doing what you want to do. But um, it's all part of the process, you know, you have to have them low points in your life to be able to bounce back stronger and feel good about yourself. While you are injured, were you ever embarrassed about being injured? Because I used to feel that sometimes. Oh. Um, yeah, because you sort of like want to be out there to impress the manager and some people think, oh, is he, is he, really, is he really fit, is he faking it or um, is there anything really wrong with him? And like you always have these doubts going through your head, but like you know the pain yourself. Yeah. No one else can feel your pain, yeah. so you just have to just block it all out and take the mainly take the pressure off yourself, and then try and bounce forward. You say you have to accept in this profession, so I think maybe if you're football and people want to talk about your performance, but some of the real personal comments when I do I do the media side now, and sometimes people make comments that I think you don't know me, and it yeah. seems like I could get 50 nice messages, but that one horrible message can sometimes strike me a bit deep and I'm look, I'm pretty well double your age so that can still hurt me so how, how have you dealt with that side of it? It is, it is hard because you see all the nice messages and then like you said you see that one that like might affect you because you you might have been through that and it might affect you in a bad way but like I said in this in or in like in any industry you have to like put it to the side and show people what you what you are about and prove that you're better than that. And a message to anybody if they were feeling a little bit low, maybe you know wanting to uh, bottling something up. What would yeah. your message be to anybody who might might be suffering from mental health? Um, I'd just say, don't be afraid to speak to speak to someone about it. You know, because the more you bottle it up inside, the more it's going to get worse. And then as soon as you let the lid open and speak to people, I wouldn't say all your problems go away, but it's definitely going to better fit. It's going to make that bottle a little bit lighter. So definitely open up and, and speak to people and I feel like the more awareness we create, the more, um, the more good it's going to do to the people that don't really want to come out and speak about it.
Great message, top man. Thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you, Thank Thank you, you again.